Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end, we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. I'm going to be doing this with you throughout the entire video, so it's like we're doing it together. I always answer comments, so make sure to leave a comment. The company we're going to look at is CVS, the pharmacy chain. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $85.9 billion. So it's a pretty good sized company. And they're trading at 65.67, so that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and you discount that number back to today's value. That's what I'm doing in this video using my model. And now I'm pulling the actual free cash flows. And this is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And then we're going to pull the net income, which is a profit and loss on the income statement. And we also need the revenue, which are the sales for each year. And we'll throw that into the model. It looks like they had pretty strong free cash flow every year between six and ten billion dollars that's a lot of free cash flow and in 2018 that negative net income but the other three years were positive their sales have been increasing every year especially from 2018 to 2019 that's a pretty big jump wow let's look at a capital structure we gotta figure out the interest rate they pay in their debt that's three billion dollars that's on the income statement let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have and current debt of $3.8 billion, that's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of $65 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. Since interest payments are tax deductible, let's get their effective tax rate. Income before tax of $9 billion. Income tax of $2.4 billion. Well, the effective tax rate is 26%. The cost of debt is 3.3%. Now we need the beta to get the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a low beta, 0.7, so the stock moves less than the market. Let's go back to the balance sheet, get their current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets are assets that can be easily liquidated into cash within 12 months. And that consists of $50 billion. Let's see what that is. 8 billion cash, 6.7 billion of receivables, 17 billion of inventory, and 5 billion of other. Let's get their current liabilities. We also need this to calculate the current ratio. And that's 3.8 billion of current debt, 10 billion of accounts payable, 12 billion of accrued liabilities, and 4.8 billion of other. Now the stockholders' equity, that's total assets minus total liabilities. That's $64 billion. And that consists of $45 billion of common stock, $45 billion of retained earnings, $1 billion of accumulated other comprehensive income. Yahoo Finance doesn't list all the details on its website, so there must be some line item with a negative in here, because obviously these numbers add up to more than $64 billion. Let's go back to the income statement and get their operating income. And that's $12 billion. We need this to calculate the interest coverage ratio later. Let's look at the capital structure. Cost of debt is 3.3%. Weight of debt is 52%. Cost of equity is 7.7%. Weight of equity is 48%. And the WAC is 5.4%. That's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. That's here in green. And we get a value of the company of $178 billion. We divide that by 1.3 billion shares. We get an intrinsic stock price of 136. It's trading at 66. So it's a strong buy according to the model. It's at a 52% discount. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 140. So they're really close to where I'm at, which is interesting. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. It seems like it's been on a steady decline pretty much consistently. 
and it's at a fairly low point, so it seems like a really good value. Let's look at our financial ratios. We have a good PE, a great price of sales, and a great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 13. So investors are paying $13 for $1 of net income. Price sales ratio, stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue or shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.3. So investors are paying 30 cents for $1 of revenue. This is a really good ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 1.3. So investors are paying $1.30 for $1 book value. So book value per share of 49 indicates that if the company went bankrupt today, it could give each shareholder $49, which could pay almost the full price of the stock. They have a weak current ratio, a good interest card ratio, and a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they're just shy of covering their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity, so they can only provide a 10% return to their equity holders. I like to see above 20% interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense so they can cover their interest payments almost four times. I like to see above two so they're doing well here. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Anthem, Benefit, and United Healthcare. They're in the same industry as CVS. And if CVS has a number in green they're better than the average. If they're in red they're worse than the average. So in terms of price to earnings, price to sales, and price to book, they're better than the average. They do have the best price to sales and price to book of the four companies. Current ratio, they're worse than the average. ROE, they're worse than the average. In terms of debt, they're about average at 52%. Average is 48%. And the average market cap is $111 billion. They're at $85 billion. Still a massive company, but below the average since United Healthcare is so big. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I'll definitely answer it. Thanks for watching.